Welcome back to New Rockstars. This is the big question, the show that gives you too much information on why sometimes the villain might just be right. I mean, sure, some cities may need to be destroyed and some of your morals may need to be compromised, but in the end, you'll see why all those people had to die. <laughs> My name is MT and with me <laughs> Don't turn to the dark Sorry. side. Everyone at New Rockstars loves the villains seriously. too much. My name is MT, and I'm here today with off-screen producer, Brandon. What's going on, Brandon? Oh, not much, MT. You know, just here to give more reasons why we should be liking the villains. What's wrong with us? Why are we always on the villain side? Sometimes you gotta play Mad Titans advocate. So, you know, it's occasionally. You know, yeah, it's, it's true. Really. I, don't, I don't know if it was in... <laughs> is it the deleted version of I Am Legend or the real version of I Am Legend? I don't remember. But at the end, when the monsters are like, you're our monster to Will Smith, and it's like, oh. Oh, dang. He was killing us. All right, hit me with that big question, Brandon. Okay, MT. So now that we've had some time post MCU's Infinity War and Endgame, and a few mm. more movies and series have come out and been released, uh, we're starting to see the actions of our favorite Mad Titan Thanos in a whole new light. Okay. In fact, Mm. it's made us even start to question our own feelings on the events that took place in Endgame, okay? That leads us Mm. to this week's big question. Was Thanos right? Right? Mm. Right? Was Thanos right? Well, answer, no, of course not. Murder (laughs) is never okay. Listen, if you're thinking about murdering half of humanity, don't do it. Take a walk instead. Go to your local um, uh, grocery store. Have a banana. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Eat a banana. Feel better (laughs) by yourself. Put some food on your stomach. Get some potassium in. Eat a Snickers, maybe, instead of committing genocide. Yeah, get that post-banana clarity. That's what everyone's looking for out there. Maybe, though, it is. Well, it's sort of complicated. It's Of course it's not okay, but, like, it's... Okay, let's get into it, because this is something we've discussed before on the channel, because we've looked into the long-lasting effects, both good and bad, that the snap would have on society, culture, governments, industry, and the environment. But now that we're a few years past Endgame, we've learned a lot more about how the cosmic side of things work in the MCU. And it's put Thanos' plan into a whole new light. So let's go through some of those revelations and see if what we now know makes us view Thanos in a better or less murdery light or less bad light. In a, in a yeah. whole new light, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's still pretty murdery, but maybe it's still the, very the murdery. The light you know what? I'm not. Yeah, bit. I'm not trying to excuse Thanos. Thanos did yeah. a terrible thing, and I'm glad that motherfucker yeah. is dead. Yeah. But <laughs> if Thanos was real, I'd be my anxiety would be a lot worse than it is, and it's pretty bad. Let me tell you. But anyway, <laughs> I'm glad um, he's dead too. I love it when <laughs> Thor's like, man, jabbed his head off. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do it again. I don't give I'll a do it again. Give me a beer. <laughs> but hey, I feel like Fat Thor was well deserved because after, if you uh, killed the bad Titan, I'm yeah. going to have a Doritos and brownies for a very long time in celebration. I'm just going to tell you that right I now. I agree. And we, we've seen the set <laughs> photos. We know he's back in shape again. He's the women and Ooh. most of the men of America are happy that he's in good shape again. But you know, respect not me. fat respect fat Thor, please. Respect I'm fat not Thor. I'm not a fan of in shape Thor because that means <laughs> Excuse me. that there's less women for me. <laughs> Thor's taken all our women and some of our men. <laughs> When people ask me, MT, why are you single? I'm like, it's, it's because Chris Hemsworth, man. I don't know what to say. He, they got to fix this, the Chris Hemsworth problem. This is where you need the Jesse Pinkman meme, right? He can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> he can't that. keep getting away with this. He can't keep getting away with this. Anyway, let's begin with the big cosmic baby that was hiding inside of Earth, just waiting to bust out and kill us all. Tiamat, our favorite celestial inside of Earth. Because in the Eternals, we learn about the emergence, the event that would see the birth of a brand new bouncing baby celestial named Tiamat. And Arishem tells Cersei the truth about where the baby celestials come from. And uh, it's not as fun as uh, <laughs> as no, you think. Because it turns as sexy out- as you think it would be. It's not as sexy. Uh, you don't need a blue chew for this one. It turns out you just need to kill a whole planet full of intelligent life energy just to turn one celestial seed into a fully grown celestial. And I don't know why uh, celestial came out of Earth because <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of intelligent life here these days. Ooh, uh, but it- <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Sorry, not to get topical. But yes, you have to destroy the whole planet to set the celestial free. But that's just life in the cosmos, baby. I mean, sorry, the celestials don't make the rules. 
Uh, well, actually, you know, the Celestials do make the rules, so I don't know why they don't, just don't figure out a different way to grow babies. But, yeah, I mean, that's, celestials... a, that's a pretty strong point, MT. Like, <laughs> why are they doing it this way? You couldn't think of anything else. You build armies of robot Eternals and Deviants, but you right? can't figure out a new way to make a baby. Come on. That hurts less people? I don't know. I feel like there's lack of imagination, Arishim. I don't know. Are you trying to say I have no imagination? Yes. But we also learned from Ajax and Eternals that when Thanos snapped away half the people on Earth, he also delayed the emergence. So I guess mm. thank you is in order to Thanos. Thank you for uh, delaying our inevitable yeah. demise. But now, whether or not the delaying of the emergence was something Thanos was trying to do, we can't say for sure. I mean, he did seem more concerned about working through his own trauma from the effects of overpopulation and resource scarcity on Titan than, you know, stopping the birth of a Celestial. Because, you know, he just seemed like he was just really upset that no one listened to him. <laughs> He's just like, I, I was right! I was right and no one listened to me, so I'm just gonna exert my will in the universe. I'm right, you're wrong, shut up. But that's because his monologuing to Tony and the gang only gave us that insight. But given his knowledge around Infinity Stones, one would think that he would also know about Celestials. By stepping away half of life in the universe, was he also trying to stop the birth of any more Celestials? That's a great point, MT, because, yeah, Thanos must know about Celestials, right? His, his He's papa, got it. His papa was an Eternal. His brother's an Eternal. Uh, I mean, uh, it's <laughs> it's Harry Styles. It's I Harry mean, Styles. We already knew he was Eternal. So clearly he knows about Celestials. And he must know about how Celestials get born by now. Unless his mm. dad never got out of the programming matrix. I don't know how they're going to handle it in the MCU. But it seems mm. like Eros knows what's going on, right? He's yeah. like, let's go to Erishim. Let's f get him back. And let's stop all these emergencies. Emergencies. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Yeah, was he really doing, did he really just care about, like, balance in the universe? Or was there a part of him that's like, also, I hate these Celestials. And is that maybe what mm. happened to Titan? Was it just resource mm. scarcity? Or did maybe, you know, a Celestial pop out of there? It didn't fully destroy mm. the planet, but is that what messed up the gravity and caused all the breakage? I don't know. Mm. It's, I think it's quite possible that there was a some type of emergence or, like, maybe the, like, because the, the people of the planet died early... Uh, there was a, a pre-termination of the baby uh, ahead of time. So, mm. like, you know, yeah, I think that, you know, they're, they're, he's definitely got to be aware of the celestial Thanos. Like, that's definitely yeah. got to be on his mind to some degree. And because the Celestials do end up destroying life, and, he, like, and Thanos' whole thing is the managing of life and, like, the keeping it from getting too overgrown or too less... Like, that's why he's a farmer at the end of Infinity War. That's right. why he goes to a farm, because he's basically being a farmer. Yeah, I think that it just makes sense that he would be against the celestial agenda of just, you know, using planets as eggs. And so he would just be like, all right, you guys don't know that you're eggs. I don't want to really uh, jar you. Because, uh, like, if he just told everybody, yeah, your planet's an egg, that would really f*** up a lot of planets. You know, yeah, he could go around telling people, like, oh, there's a celestial in here, and it's going to burst out, and so we need to wipe out half of you. Sorry, but I'm right. But I think that's a lot to download on people, right? He's not going to tell Tony, mm -hmm. like, I need to explain to you how the cosmos was created and where the mm -hmm. Infinity Stones came from and how celestials are made and mm -hmm. how they are created and blah, 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 blah. And also, this is why I'm doing it. Like, he doesn't have time for all that. But Tony understands like population control. He understands uh -huh. the need for resources. So he's like, I'm just going to tell dumb idiots in the universe this story. <laughs> but everyone else I can explain it to. Uh, like, this is mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Well, like, you know, he, people didn't listen to him the first time. So I feel like no, he's not really inclined to explain himself. He's like, people are stupid. They don't understand. They don't have my will. That was his biggest thing. It's like, I am the only person with the will to do that what is necessary. And we sort of see that with Mordo, too. It's like this thing with, like, like when I love in Doctor Strange 1 when Mordo says, in response to Doctor Strange saying he doesn't have imagination, he's like, you lack a spine. No, Stephen. You lack a spine. And, like, yeah. that's the whole thing with, with villains. It's like, you need a spine to do what's necessary. You gotta make the tough calls. Right. You gotta make the tough calls. But, yeah, I, I think that um, the Celestials are uh, on Thanos' shit list for, for sure. Yeah. So, I, I I mean, I love this idea that he's like, I'm going to wipe this. I don't love the idea. Caveat. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I it's like great. The motivation for Thanos to be, yes, I'm worried about scarcity in the universe and balance and blah, blah, blah. But also, I've got to stop these Celestials. They ruined mm. my family. They ruined my planet. I got to go. You know, I think it was mm. Arishem said in Eternals, either every million years or billion years, like a celestial is created. Every billion years, new celestials must be born. But I also don't know if it's only one at a time. 
Like if mm. Tiamat had been born, would it not be another million years till an emergence happens? It seems like too long. I don't know. The in the grand scheme of the cosmos, who knows? We don't know how many celestials are out there roaming around. You know, they get invented all the time in the comics. They'll pop up a new one here and there. So I don't know. And it would be interesting if like part of the fall of Titan was also a celestial getting out of there. Maybe they tried to cut it out, an emergency section, if you will. Get that Ooh. that celestial seed out of the planet, and that's what destroyed it. And Thanos was like, no, screw this. I'm just going to wipe out the baby food. And that's the, the living <laughs> beings in the universe. But another thing to consider here is what Doctor Strange learned when he was viewing the 14,605,000 outcomes for the Avengers battle with Thanos. In one of those realities, did he see a scenario where the Avengers were able to stop Thanos before the snap, but then the Earth gets wrecked when oh. Tiamat pops out not long after? So is that why he was willing to let Tony and Natasha sacrifice themselves? Because, you know, he sort of saw what was to come. That would be crazy, right? He's like watching all of them and he sees the one like, oh, they beat Thanos. You know, like they stop yeah. Peter before Peter Quill before he like punches Thanos in the face or something. They stop him. They kill Thanos and they all go back home and they're like, this is great. We're having a great time. And then just ba-boom, they're all dead. He's like, oh, not that one. Fast forward, fast forward. Different. <laughs> <laughs> different outcome all the sorcerers we know that like the mystic arts people know about the celestials right because Wong and Wong explained the whole thing so they must know so it's crazy to think that like yeah dr strange maybe saw team like destroy the earth and he's like oh this is bad so so we have to let thanos at least do the snap to delay the events because even if thanos hadn't if thanos hadn't snapped and the emergence happens earlier like ajak was saying the eternals wouldn't have been in the right mindset to even stop it Right. They wouldn't even right. know. They'd be spread to the wind. They'd have no clue that it was coming. Mm. So that would it would have just happened and nothing would have stopped it. So Thanos kind of had to do the snap to stop the emergence. Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so I feel like the snap happening and, you know, the Eternals watching humanity go through the snap and rally together from the snap. I feel like really may have pushed them to want to protect humanity even more. Yeah, the snap really did have to happen for the events of Eternals to take place in the way that they did. I'm I think it's really possible that Doctor Strange did see this as one of the events. And even mm -hmm. though he knows in the in the one way it plays out, one way, that Tony and <laughs> Natasha both like die among other people die, right? But like th that we know yeah. of our heroes. Tony and Natasha have to sacrifice themselves in order to get that far to undo it. He's willing to let that happen. I mean, we saw, you know, Doctor Strange in No Way Home is ready to let anyone die to keep the universe rolling along. Doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't he told the teenager, he's like, yeah. I will let you die. I don't yeah. care about you and your field trip. It's just like, <laughs> they got to go back. They got to die. Sorry. That's how they got to be here. So it doesn't surprise me that Doctor Strange is like, well, I can let Tony and Natasha die if it prevents the Earth from exploding. So that's how it's got to be. And this this further feeds into my theory that we have the evil Doctor Strange on our planet. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, it's quite possible because he just he literally just does whatever he yeah. wants. It's our like, oh, I'll just Strange do it. Who might cares be the most evil one out there. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but another thing we've learned about recently is the Dweller in Darkness. And one thing the Dweller in Darkness loves to eat is souls. Yum, 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 yummy souls. He loves soul food, and I can relate. It's delicious. <laughs> and the souls are the source of the Dweller's powers. We still don't know about where the Dweller comes from or who the Ten Rings started to send a beacon out to when the Dweller was killed. But did Thanos know about this threat and wanted to reduce the number of souls available for feasting? That's that's an interesting uh, thought there, MT, because I, I imagine the Dweller lives in another dimension. I think you've talked about this before. Yeah. I think he's like an interdimensional being, right? Yeah. And that's part of all this dark magic stuff we're getting into in this phase of the MCU. So it would be mm -hmm. interesting that th if he was like, I know there's this beast out there and it'll just consume souls and get stronger as it consumes them. And it could be a threat mm -hmm. to me ruling, ruling the universe. Even though Thanos doesn't want to rule the universe. He's supposed to be a farmer. He, he could be a threat <laughs> to my farm. I don't know if this flower <laughs> coming and eating all my crops. So I got to get rid of these souls before he can eat them. Thanos watches a bug life and is like, what the f***? Yeah. <laughs> do something. Not in my farm. No yeah, one's yeah. doing my crops. I mean, I'll put my armor up as a scarecrow, but we gotta, that's not going to stop the dweller. <laughs> That'd be so funny farm. if he made a scarecrow for the dweller and stuff. <laughs> it's just a that's little so Shang-Chi scarecrow. <laughs> doing that's a little so kick. funny. The scarecrow, I mean, the dragon's like, oh my God, it's Shang-Chi. It's <laughs> Shang-Chi. <laughs> <gonna go. laughs> my dummy. He blasts my dummy. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, because, like, you know, Zoil in Darkness, as we see from Shang-Chi, just by getting a few souls from the people from Ta Lo, was able to power up, like, fairly yeah. a lot. <laughs> like, it was fairly substantially. And so, um, if he had an entire planet of souls, maybe he could have just ascended to god-like levels. So, like, we don't really know what was going to happen if he was to uh, suck the soul of the Great Protector. So, maybe Thanos knows that there there is a whole race of these guys. And they're like, they're coming... And, yeah. like, we need to make sure that, like, these souls, they don't have enough food to become these huge, like, maybe Dormammu levels of, of, of godhood. Yeah, um, whoever's in so. charge of the Dweller or, you know, is connected to the Dweller and is using the Dweller obviously has other creatures that probably eat souls as well. You know, the little soul suckers. They they took the souls mm-hmm. to, to Papa. You know, he maybe just in general, he's like, whatever this dark creature is or whoever rules this dark dimension, probably Dormammu, but whoever... I got to keep him from getting more souls and getting more powerful. Got to stop the Celestials. Mm. Got to stop the darkness. Got to stop the band, the darkness, and then go start my farm. Yeah, just basically just controlling the food source. It's, you know, what farmers sort of do. (laughs) It's what farmers do. (laughs) Let's also consider the Kang of it all. Because is there any way that Thanos wielding the Infinity Stones to cut the population of the universe in half was an attempt to dilute the powers of... Of King the Conqueror. Mm. Do you think Thanos knows about Kang? I guess that's the first part, right? Do you think he's aware Mm. of Kang the Conqueror? Do you think he's encountered a version of Kang somewhere? I think that it is possible that Thanos has encountered a version of Kang that he didn't know that he encountered. But I think that any knowledge of Kang might have come after he snapped the, after he had got all of the Infinity Stones. Because as mm. we saw in What If, when Ultron fan, when Ultron Vision got all the Infinity Stones, that's when he was able to, you know, have awareness beyond this plane right. of existence. Yeah, yeah. And so I could see Thanos just snapping and just being like, after he sees little baby Gamora in his mind, just being like, <laughs> wait a minute, that's that's a black man up there, <laughs> and he's te- he's in charge of everything. <laughs> Famous actor Jonathan Majors <laughs> up there in the sky. I can't I even love believe his work. it. Anyway, <laughs> I wish I hadn't snapped away Hollywood because I loved his work. Great stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Thanos knows about Kang because I feel like our MCU was very tightly controlled by the TVA uh, and it yeah. was keeping out all the other Kangs, right? Maybe someone in his little entourage knew about Kang, like the magic guy, Ebony Ma. Ebony Ma. <laughs> Maybe he knew about Kang and he was telling Thanos, mm. like, also there's this council of men out there that want to take each other and fight each other and thanos is like i don't need all that i'm just trying to have a <laughs> i don't need all please that. okay <laughs> i don't care i don't care ebony like what if kang was an eternal oh. like a, a king variant at least Ooh. that'd be interesting oh and like the the celestials are using their eternal kang to like have another version of control like they got a they got a bunch of plant they have so much time they have all these like mm. little fail safes hidden around just to screw us living beings so they can <laughs> feed us to their babies. Someone's got to do Those something freaks. about these celestials. Hey. Do something about it. I think that Druig, honestly, Druig is probably going to come and kill all the celestials. Bro. Oh, baby. When, like, he that takes dude over, is... when that guy mind controls a celestial and just uses it to mm-hmm. wreck house, that's going to be bro. Baller. He's baller. going to, he's probably going to mind control them and tell them all to dead themselves. <laughs> Uh, Which would be very dark, but, like, I can see him doing it. That's f***ed up, okay? And finally, in the Marvel What If series that came out last year, we were introduced to a dangerous zombie virus that existed in one of the universes out there in the multiverse. And in that universe, zombie Thanos was well on his way to collecting the sixth and final Infinity Stone. So is there some way that the main MCU's Thanos could have known about the zombie's counterpart and then collected the Infinity Stones as sort of a protection against that zombie Thanos oh, threat? I love that idea because it was insinuated that the zombie virus came from the quantum realm, right? Very right, dangerous, right. probably created by Celestials because they're monsters. So this idea that it exists, and maybe this is another thing where like Ebony Ma was like, also, sir, that is um, a virus <laughs> out there. <and> it's- <laughs> There's a version of you that's a zombie and he's got all these stones and he's going to come. He's like, fine, whatever. I'll get the stones. Stop (laughs) bugging me, Ebony Ma. You're always so creepy right behind me. So it was like a warning. He was like, well, I got to get these stones just in case he comes to my dimension or my universe and we can stop this virus because there's got to be a version of me that's got his head on straight, who's focused, who's farming (laughs) and is like ready to take control. I mean, the only thing that really trips me up is the fact that Thanos destroyed the stones, but I still think maybe he didn't. He used the stones to destroy the stones. Liar! 
Maybe he just said mm. he did. Maybe he made a thing look like they were destroyed. But I don't think he did. I think he knew better. Because mm. how could we have Imagine if Thanos with... left a treasure hunt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, in case I died, I left a treasure hunt so you could find me in Infinity Stones. Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy 4, Dead Man's Chest, here we go. Emerge <laughs> with the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yo, Nicolas Cage. Make Nicolas Cage Star-Lord. Let's oh, do National maybe. Treasure. <laughs> Yeah, there's a version of there's a multiverse version of Star Lord that's uh, Nicolas Cage. It's not even Star; it's just Nicolas Cage. He was it's just Nicolas Cage playing Nicolas Cage. <laughs> well, yeah, you were saying earlier, MT, that you know you brought up like Ultron Vision. How once he had the stones, he was aware of like the different universes. I mean, he's also Ultron was very smart and was able to like right. do all that computation and kind of gave him a little more clairvoyance into how everything worked. But I don't doubt that, right. you know, on that farm, before Thanos destroyed the stones, hashtag didn't destroy the stones, <laughs> you know, he's sitting around, he's doing some farming, and he's like, oh, there is a multiverse out there. You know, he does get a glimpse, mm-hmm. he sees Jonathan Majors, and he's like, oh, this is great. <laughs> and then he sees the watch. <laughs> this is great. The watch, he's like, what's going on here? And he's like, get out of my business, watch you. I'm a farmer now. <laughs> I do like that idea that he gets the stones, and he sees, like, there's this threat out there, maybe he sees what it all is, and... That's what drives them to destroy them or at least act like they were destroyed so no one else in this universe tries to get them and then creates create all this problem. I think I like that idea that Thanos was like, I'm going to wipe out half. I don't like the idea. <laughs> I respect the idea <laughs> that Thanos was like, I'm going to wipe out half the living life in this universe. That will That will stop the Celestials from getting so powerful. That'll stop the Dweller in Darkness. That'll put a, a wrench in Kang's plans. That'll prevent this zombie virus from getting here. And I could just be a farmer. Okay. That's all I want to do. <laughs> I can just chill for and a And I can just chill. <laughs> Would someone be grateful for once? Ebony, don't stand behind me. You're always right behind me. Ugh. Hi. Okay. He's literally like uh, that that re- creep, creepy kid that used to follow Helga Pataki around in <laughs> Hey Arnold. He's just like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to say Thanos was right because he's not right. He's not correct. Mm. Was he driven? Yes. Did he have oh, yeah, for sure. some altruistic goals in mind? Yes. But I don't think he's 100% right. His methods are sloppy mm. and I don't like them. And I think he could have taken a second with the stones once he got them all to maybe reflect before just, you know, full stop wiping everybody out the second he could. So I don't think mm. he was right in that aspect. I think he was right. And that there's a lot of dangers out there that we need to get ready for. That's all I'll say. And hey, are you one of those people who's always tired and finding yourself reaching for an extra coffee to get you through the day? You need a better way to energize. And Napjitsu offers time-released caffeine to keep your energy steady throughout the day. Napjitsu's natural supplements were made by people who knows how it feels to be tired and busy. Their patent-pending formulas have natural ingredients like B vitamins, guarana, and ginseng to give you a boost of energy without the crash later. And each Napjitsu product provides brain-boosting nootropics to unlock steady energy right when you need it. And the result, your peak performance all day long. And Napjitsu supplements are packaged into small packets so that you can take them wherever and whenever you might need an energy boost. So whether you need to experience deeper sleep or unlock immediate lasting energy, each Napjitsu product is designed to help you achieve your optimal performance. And remember, the smart rests more and the wise rests better. So rest up and level up with Napjitsu. And for a limited time, receive 30% off your first purchase when you go to napjitsu.com slash big question. Go to napjitsu.com slash big question for 30% off your first purchase today. That is N-A-P-J-I-T-S-U dot com slash Big question. Thank you to Napjitsu for sponsoring this video. Well, Brandon, now it is time for our bite sized question. Are you ready, buddy? Oh, I'm ready for some bite sized questions. Nom, nom, nom. All right, my friend. If the armorer said that Mandalorian steel is meant for armor, not weapons, then why did she make the whistling birds for Mando? And this is from Flo is the Super and the Name Less Thirty on Twitter. Thank you guys so much for this question. But that's those are really, this is a really good question. Yeah, this this was a good question. We had a couple of people ask this question. We listed two of them there. We asked in a tweet recently for some questions, and this came in a couple times. And this regards a recent plot point on an episode of the Book of Boba Fett. Really, it was like the Mandalorian premiere of season three. But whatever, what are you gonna do? In that episode, we revisit our good friend Mando, aka Din Djarin who had made his way back to the armorer and showing off the Beskar spear given to him by Ahsoka last season. Man, the armorer is tough to say. Armorer. 
Get a better name. Armor. armor. Get over yourself. <laughs> Seriously, get a real name. Get a real like name. Jessica. Get, name yourself <laughs> something real. Ugh. So he's showing off this this cool spear he got. You know, he made a new friend in this Jedi, though he's not kind of cool with Jedis. He's iffy on them. But the very dogmatic armor gets on his case about it and is like, Mandalorian steel shouldn't be made into weapons because it can be used against other Mandalorians. And, you know, Mandalorians really have trust issues because it it's didn't true. go well for them. <laughs> they blew up the planet. <laughs> Um, so Mandalorian steel is of course Beskar and hold on a minute mm. back in season one of the Mandalorian this very same armorer made the whistling <laughs> birds out of Beskar for our boy Manto okay Wh- who's, she, who's she trying to trick with these little seriously birds, okay those little tiny wrist missiles you know that we we saw shot all over the place that's those a weapon amazing. okay you're a hypocrite armorer you're insane you're ugly you're disgusting I'm gonna kill you give me $200 Okay, so there's a couple things to think about here. First, okay. we don't know which part of the whistling birds are Beskar. Okay, is it the little munitions themselves, like the little bullets that are Beskar? Or is it just like the mm. launcher is Beskar? So that could be like a loophole okay. where it's like, well, the bullets aren't, you know, a launcher is not a weapon without the things yeah. you launch. I don't know. I don't know. I, I tend to think that like the launcher is made of Beskar because it wouldn't make sense to have Beskar bullets. It's so valuable. You could like never shoot those off. Is he gonna go dig them out of the people after he shoots them off? Like, that's insane. That's insane. I feel like your corpse is worth more than you were. Yeah, yeah, you were like, I would never shoot this thing off. It's like a million dollar rocket. I don't. What am I gonna do? So her point about the spear, no pun intended, uh, makes sense because you could anyone can like use a spear and stab a Mandalorian and pierce the armor, right? But we don't even know if like the whistling birds are capable of piercing armor. So she may not see that as like a threat. To other Mandalorians. Also, mm. I don't know if anyone off the street can just pick up some whistling birds and shoot them at, you know, another Mandalorian. But anyone can pick up the spear and stab a Mandalorian. So that's kind. Of, I, I kind of see that point where it's like the whistling birds. Anyone can have these. They're not going to damage our our cool ass armor. Okay. Okay. Now here's my, my third okay. point. The armor is like part of a pretty extreme cult of Mandalore that descended from the children of the Watch. You know, they're the ones that sat on the moon and watched the planet blow up. And so while she, and she practices these like super ancient ways of Mandalore, it's not like what she says is the truth for everybody. Like that's part of their weird cult. Remember, they don't take their helmets off and stuff. Other Mandalorians like Bo-Katan, they're like, yeah, we take our helmet off. We're, we're cool. It's fine. I may be screwed up as a leader, but, you know, things are going to be okay. Meanwhile, like the armor <laughs> and... You know, her little cult, they're like, we we wear a mess all the time. When they were down in the tunnels, their rules were like, only one person can go out at a time. Like, I don't, everything she says shouldn't be taken as like, this is how it has to be. This is the rule of the universe. Okay, so mm. who cares? Who cares if I made a weapon out of this car? <laughs> You're not the boss of me, lady. And some people also brought up the dark saber since its hilt mm. is made of Beskar. So it's like, that's a weapon. But the saber blade sure. itself can't even cut through Beskar. So it's not much of a threat to other Mandalorians. I think her little cute saying was more of like the, you know, the fortune cookie version of we can't be making easy to handle weapons out of Beskar that anyone could use against a Mandalorian. But that doesn't sound as good on the show. Okay, so they simplify it. (laughs) That's really good. I like that answer. I I really like what you said about the the Darksaber blade because that makes so much sense. Because like that is literally a weapon. You can hit a Mandalorian (laughs) with the hilt of it, I guess. You know, and her, her tools are made of Beskar and she was using them as weapons. I mean, you know, she's like sparring with them and stuff. So it's like, you know, it's more of like a guideline than a rule. OK, OK. Interesting. All right, Brent, I got another question for you, because in No Way Home, Electro said he was absorbing data right before he showed up. So was this the writer's attempt to explain how he knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man? And is there any comic book reasoning that could make that make sense? And this is from Mixer Hustle on Twitter. Thank you, Mixer Hustle. And uh, keep hustling, my keep friend. Keep hustling. Keep the hustle alive. Every day I'm hustling. Day. Shake that. Sorry. So to your first point, probably, you know, probably. That's probably what the writers <laughs> were doing. They were saying he's absorbing it. That's how he knows because the little rule of the spell was that people who knew who Peter Parker was got were coming into our universe, right? Or who knew Peter mm. Parker was Spider-Man. And in the movie directly, they didn't point out that Max Dillon ever knew that, but he was absorbing right. information right as he died, okay? And mm. he, he, he specifically says in the movie, quote, I was whooping Spider-Man's ass, he'll tell you. Then he caused an <laughs> overload. I was stuck in the grid absorbing data, and I was about to turn into pure energy, end quote. So, yes, he was absorbing all the information from the grid, which likely 
included computers, which were attached to the power grid, and those computers are attached to the internet. They have data. There's probably a computer at the Oscorp in the Amazing Spider-Man universe that said, Peter Parker, Spider-Man. You know, someone probably wrote it down <laughs> at some point. So that's how he knew it, and he was getting all this data at once. There are some explanations of Electro's powers in the comics that would explain this ability. In the comics, he's able to detect and manipulate electrical systems, right, obviously, and he's also able to kind of sense them as well. If he doesn't see them directly, he knows they're there. And he's able to use this ability to control electrical systems with his mind. You know, he can disconnect alarm systems and control computers. So I, I think that makes sense, right? Electro was originally created in 1963, pre-modern internet. But it makes mm. sense if he's able to control a computer, he would be able to retrieve information from them, especially if he's in the mm. process of like, turning into pure energy, I think it makes sense that he would be able to like get some of this data. Okay. So I think the comics do support this, this great little, you know, writing trick they use to get Electro into No Way Home. I think it it, it clears the muster for me. It clears the muster. It, it does make sense. Cause like, I feel like another part of the Amazing Spider-Man 2 that people forget and like, you know, with good reason, cause like it's kind of had no payoff was that Peter was being spied on. <laughs> yeah. Like there was people outside, like in a van, just being like, oh, that yeah. teenager's saying things. What's he saying? Um, so they probably put two and two together that this yeah. boy. Someone um, someone typed involved. it up on a computer and Electro. Exactly. It. That's how it happens. Exactly. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. But here's another one for you, buddy. It's probably the biggest question that people have in the MCU. Oh, okay. My biggest question, honestly. This is your friendly neighborhood flirting. All right, Brandon. Now it is time for our box of scraps. Oh, the box, box of scraps. scraps. In a cave with a box of scraps. He's in a cave with a box of scraps. Is that Michael McDonald? Mm -mm -mm. So, Brandon, if you were to build your own theme park, what rides and IPs would you include in said theme park? Mm. And this is from DJ Serrano03 on Twitter. Thank you, DJ. It was. It was. <laughs> Thank you, DJ. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is our own like wizarding world of Harry Potter, right? Like, what we want to build a super yes. immersive theme park with a specific IP. Uh, what, yes. what, what what would you build? Hmm. hmm. Well, I will say, you know, I'm a big fan of Disney Disneyland. And, mm. you know, they do a lot. And they already have, you know, they created the Pirates of the Caribbean. We brought it up earlier. But, man, if they really went, like, all in with it and they had, like, their park, right? You're you're in the uh, Tortugas. You're in the Tortugas. Uh, in the Tortugas. <laughs> they build, like, a Tortugas and it's, like, a whole city. And you can go on the ships and there's a ride where, like, you get to have your own ship and command it and, like, fire at the other ships. Boom, boom, boom. And you can dress like a pirate all day. And you can walk around and you can drink rum and you can eat. You can eat whatever you want, and it's like a whole beach-themed tropical, like, pirate experience. That'd be cool. I mean, I love the Pirates of the That'd Caribbean ride as it exists now. That'd be But make dope. me, like, a full immersive park. You know what I mean? That, that would be really awesome. That would be so much fun. I feel like there would be so much shenanigans in that oh, park. Oh, so much shenanigans. People drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not a safe place. Do not bring your children to the Pirates adults of the Caribbean only. Park. But, yo, an adults-only theme park would be bananas, Yeah, that bro. would be bananas. Oh, my God. I mean, God. I don't, if you've ever wow. been to Universal Studios when they do Halloween Horror Nights, that's a, that's a pretty much adults-only theme park, and it gets wild. It gets crazy <laughs> in there. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God. I would love that so much. Honestly, you got to start that so I could go and yeah. feel like a pirate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, most Renaissance fairs are halfway there now. It's like you go to any, any Renaissance fair. It's mostly pirates. Like, I don't think this is the Renaissance, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll let it slide. But I think I would choose, it's not, it's definitely the, I was feeling like this is the opposite spectrum of yours. Oh, good, good. Uh, Animal Crossing, <laughs> honestly. Because <laughs> animal, everyone loves Animal yeah. Crossing, and I just think it's, it, they're just so cute. And like Isabel, and like have like little Tom Nooks, like greet you, and like have a little credit system. But like, I just think that Animal Crossing is so big, and people love it so much, that like a whole Animal Crossing world Bro, that would make a bazillions of dollars. That would be adorable. Um, yeah. Either that or uh, just Donkey Kong. Just like Donkey <laughs> you want Kong Donkey Kong Country for real. <laughs> That's what you want. Yes, a whole Donkey Kong Country. Um, you know what? Just make it Diddy Kongs because Donkey Kong mm. has enough shit. Diddy Kong, Dixie and Diddy Kongs uh, <laughs> theme park. I like it. Anyway, <laughs> bananas only. We only sell bananas. Bananas, bananas only. Themed food. <laughs> that post banana clarity. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Post banana clarity, amazing. 
Well, that is it for this episode of Big Question. Thank you to Brandon, as always, for joining me on this episode. Follow him at Grin and Barrick. He's an amazing person. Follow me at Mastertainment. I'm less amazing, but I say some Oh, really you're pretty stuff, amazing, so MT. Come check on, out. don't do that. Ow, thank you. And follow New Rockstars here on YouTube. And when you do hit that notification bell, so you can get notifications every time we upload a video. And if you want to continue the conversation, our New Rockstars Discord server is now open to the public. So if you're over 18 and interested, check out the New Rockstars Discord link in the description and join the conversation. And like sometimes we throw some, you know, game shows like Jackbox. We yeah, just yeah. Play come, together. So come to a game come, night. Come on, come on in. Come to a game night with the New Rockstars Discord crew. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. We love you guys so much. And we appreciate you guys for spending time with us. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye.